Hello, and welcome to Your Body, Mind, and Home. Today, we're talking about putting together jigsaw puzzles, tips and tricks for beginners to intermediate. So uh, this first part, which uh, is the video that we're, you're watching right now, is gonna be how to put them together. And the second part is going to be things like um, accessories, lighting, puzzle, puzzle selection, things like that that will make the whole process easier. Putting the puzzle together. There are four basic steps that I'm gonna walk you through. The first is putting the frame together. The second is sorting all the rest of the pieces according to color and or um, pattern. Uh, the third is to put small pieces, small parts of the puzzle together. And uh, finally, putting all of those parts together into the big puzzle and filling in the pieces. So please subscribe and like and let's get started. This is the sorting phase. So I'm getting these pieces out and just throwing a few at a time on here, looking for straight edges. If I see things together, I pull them apart. This is a straight edge. And I'm just pulling them out. It's a little easier to notice them when they're upside down because the colors distract you. So uh, you think you're gonna get every single piece this way because how couldn't you? But you're gonna miss a whole bunch. But you'll get as many as you can. And then you'll go on to the next step. Step two for the edge. We're gonna take all of these edge pieces and orient them with the edge toward me. And I've gotten so far three out of the four corners. I might have the other corner in here, but we'll put those off to the side. And first we're gonna change these all so that they're facing me and then we're gonna group them according to color. So these, that's a, not an edge piece, and that's not an edge piece, but we're gonna group them, you know, via color. So we're gonna put some of these pinkish ones over here. We're gonna put the wooden ones over here, some that have this other kind of different color of wood over here, and Here's something with graphics, I mean with letters. So we're gonna put that over here because all of those are gonna be, anything with letters is easy to put together or, or writing. So we're gonna just do all of this sorting and then we start putting pieces together. Okay, so this is what happened with my first pass. I had about 10 of these, maybe 15 of these strips of, of pieces. And when I got to the point where I had hardly any single pieces and I mostly had strips of pieces, I then looked at the box. And um, this is the picture that's supposed to be on there. And then I started to look at orient uh, the pieces that I had. And of course, I have a lot fewer than 15 strips here because once I oriented them, I ended up being able to fit them uh, even more of the strips together. Orientation is your friend. It's something you, that you wanna do um, constantly. You might wanna constantly be thinking about orientation because that will make everything a lot easier. So of course, I had to go through the puzzle box again and I came up with a number of pieces that I didn't have before. So I'm gonna put these where they belong. That one fits there. This one, yay. This one over here, oh my goodness. So this actually isn't too hard of a puzzle because sometimes this would be a lot more uh, difficult. These have writing on them, so I know exactly where they go. Because this has, this particular puzzle has a little bit of writing for copyright and that sort of thing. They don't all have that. Um, and then I have some grassy area. Oh, that doesn't quite fit yet. There. 
and oh, there. So you can see I had something a little out of place still. This fits here. That fits there. Oh, good. So this is a pretty good result. I have one complete side finished, this complete side finished. I'm missing one piece on this side and two pieces over here. So that's good enough. Now I can start doing uh, the next step of the puzzle. At this point, you're gonna sort through all the rest of the pieces according to color and pattern. Okay, so we're gonna start with the smallest piles of pieces. So I don't know if you can see this. Let me show you. So these pieces have um, like part of a sign and then there's wood or something, some, some sort of uh, texture around them. And you can see that texture has a direction. So I'm going to line up all the pieces with that direction. Some of them are going to be upside down and some of them are going to be right side up but that will give me uh, an easier way to see where they fit together. So I'm gonna align these guys. So that the woody pattern is gonna be horizontal and then the letters are gonna be uh, are going to be uh, ver vertical. Okay, so I'm going to start with the letters first because of course they're a lot easier and I'm just going to put them together. Uh, so the letters make it easy and the direction, so Horizontal lines are always difficult to piece together, to, to sort of visualize. So I'm just going to keep trying until I get them in there. Yes. Yes. Nope. So, of course, this is not horizontal, it's vertical, so I change it to horizontal and then I find its location. Oops. So as you can see, at least this piece of it is a lot more fun. <laughs> it's a lot easier and a lot more fun than if I had to just sort of try to find all these pieces one at a time. So, oops, there, there, and there. Nope, no, there. Okay, so we're basically, we have pretty much the whole thing here. And that gives us something that we can work with. We've. It gives us a sense of accomplishment that we actually put together a piece that is recognizable. And then eventually we'll look at the box and we'll determine, let me see here. So here's the box and we can see the sign is over there, which is near the right hand side. So we will move the sign over closer to where it's gonna eventually be. Eventually, this is gonna fit into here. I'm not sure, I'm not, not even gonna to try to fit it in right now. Oh, actually, let me try that. Is that, yes, okay. So you can see how easy that was to, to attach to the, um, the border. And that was just one little piece, but now we actually have something to work with. Then I'll work on this, I'll work on this, I'll work on this. These are all of the sort of smaller uh, groups of pieces that we can piece together. I'll use the cover to 
uh, figure out where they are located. And eventually, all of these piles were, will turn into smaller pictures that will move together and make, make the puzzle uh, more, you know, more obvious. At that point, you'll have just fewer pieces and then you might start to use things like shape of the pieces or, um, you know, subtle variations in the colors to sort of fill in the spots that are missing. So, and that's how we'll do the entire puzzle, one piece at a time until we're, we're completed. Okay, so let's see where we're at now. You can see I've got this whole sandy area done. And over there, I've got part of the bus. This is the picture that we're doing. So um, how did I get here? I had this pile of the sandy colored pieces and I started to notice the, the gray with yellow popping out. So I pulled them all out. Some had gray with yellow at the top and the bottom. Some had just gray with uh, yellow on one side. I started putting them together. Then I got tired of that. I went to the orange and brown. Then I went to the brown and with a, a little bit of uh, sort of a white color there. And that's what I did. I just kept breaking it down into, you know, the pieces that went together. And when I got those pieces together, then I started seeing that there were ways that the strips that I was, uh, you know, completing would fit together. I started fitting them together. Eventually they connected into the sides. And then I was still missing, you know, several pieces. At that point, when you're looking at something like this with a certain texture and a certain color, you know, when you sorted the pieces, uh, you know, lots of pieces have multiple colors and, you know, because they border on different things. So I sort of just scanned, really carefully just scanned for anything that might pop out at me. And the other pieces that had, you know, other um, colors and other textures started popping out at me that were put in the other piles because they had, you know, some of these other colors that I had decided to put them in a different pile. So I pulled all of those out, basically because this is the first part that I did. So it was just easy to go around and, and grab all the pieces that were associated with that. And then they eventually all, all uh, got put together. And then I had this one over here and that was a, another huge pile of, you know, mostly that bluish color. And as I was putting it together, I then did the same thing. I went around after I got a whole bunch of chunks together, I went around to see if there were any remnants in any of the other piles, pulled them together. And, you know, this puzzle just ended up being, you know, has, has been uh, very fun to put together because it has so many uh, different, um, different colors and textures. So as you can see from the picture, there's a not, not a lot of just plain, you know, uh, empty area or, or very consistent area. There's so much texture and color. And that's really why I bought this, uh, this particular puzzle. So let me just show you what I'm gonna do with this piece. So, you know, one of the most fun parts of this is that uh, I hardly had to look at the puzzle box at all. I mean, for, for this whole area and this whole area, I never once looked at the puzzle box because I could just look at color and texture and put it all together like that. And that is really the most fun kind of puzzle to do when you don't have to look at the, at the um, cover. So um, what I'm gonna do, let me just make sure. So now I'm going to just get this part of the puzzle over there because how, how am I going to get this into the middle now that I've got this really huge piece? So what I'm going to do is slide a chunk of this, break it, and
put it over here. Put it all back together. I usually don't have pieces this big that I'm putting in, but this one just was so much fun and it just kept falling together. So I ended up with a huge, a huge uh, area. Oh, there we go. A huge chunk. Okay, and here we are, we're all done. One thing that I didn't get to really talk about with this puzzle was, um, is the solid areas. So most puzzles um, have a solid area and often those puzzles have uh, varying shapes to the pieces. This particular puzzle, all of the pieces, every single piece had this basic shape, which has the top and bottom nubs and then these little cutouts on the side. A lot of puzzles have instead lots of different types of uh, pieces. Some have a nub here and here on the side and two cutouts here, or they have three nubs. And that's very helpful when you come to the solid, uh, the solid areas of the puzzle, because uh, sometimes all you have is shape to look at, and it just makes it a lot easier when you have a lot of different shapes to look at. And when you short sort those shapes, that helps you eliminate puzzle pieces that aren't going to uh, fit into the, the, the section that you're looking at. So if you're looking for a piece of the puzzle that has two, two um, nubs next to each other, then you know that you don't, you can completely eliminate the pieces that look like this or the pieces that have all cutouts on all sides. So that's just something to remember when you're looking at uh, uh, puzzles that have uh, varying, varying shapes to the pieces. Um, I also like to talk about things like getting stuck. There's always going to be a point where you feel stuck and you're not finding pieces for a little while. Uh, the most obvious thing is to get up and walk away and that's absolutely the best thing to do, to uh, just take a break and let your mind relax. It's really your mind that you're looking to um, refresh and it's your eyes too, but mostly your mind. So take a break, do something completely different for 10, 15 minutes, maybe hours, and then just come back to it and, and you'll be refreshed and you'll be able to start again uh, pretty quickly. Another thing to do is to just stand up and look at the pieces from a little bit of a distance. Ironically, some very subtle differences in the colors will just pop out at you and even shapes sometimes will pop out at you if you're uh, standing away from uh, you know, with a little bit of distance uh, between you and the pieces. Another thing that I do is free scanning, what I call free scanning. And it's not really scanning because I'm not just gazing over the pieces. I'm looking at individual pieces. If you've already put a few pieces of the puzzle together, a few little sections, your brain will be sort of wired to be looking for those colors and those shapes and, uh, and that, those patterns and design. So if you're browsing through all of the pieces, pieces that belong to those sections will just sort of pop out at you. And when they do, you know, I just sort of collect them in my hand as I sort of go around and then I'll go and put them in the, the, the places that they belong. So that's another, another little tip. So the last thing I wanna talk about is mistakes. And as I mentioned before, when you work with puzzles that have varying uh, shapes to the pieces, really different shapes that look almost completely mismatched, they, um, those puzzles really the only place you can make a mistake is in the, uh, in the frame, which is not fun either. But in this particular puzzle, because all of the edges match up, there's the opportunity for making mistakes within the puzzle. So I made probably three or four uh, while I was doing this. And what happens is you get down to a point and you realize that uh, things just aren't fitting together. And then eventually you just start to recognize that immediately, oh, I think I made a mistake here. And then you look closely and sometimes you can see uh, that a puzzle piece just isn't fitting well where where you put it 
sometimes in this case, there was one time where I really couldn't tell what piece I had put in wrong. And so I actually just took a few pieces out. And then when I put them back together, I actually had chosen the, the correct uh, locations for them. So um, just know that you're gonna make mistakes like that and it's not a big deal. It's not really difficult to undo them. It will, you, you know, you'll just start to realize it and you'll just look closer and you'll be able to fix those. Don't forget part two, which involves lighting and puzzle choices and accessories, which will help make uh, the puzzling much easier and more fun. And don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks. Bye.